Hello and welcome to the Gang of What We Challenge, and if necessary, destroying media narratives. I'm George Samueli. With me today, of course, is uh, co-founder of the Gaggle, Peter Lavelle. So, Peter, I mean, we've often spoken here about the NATO Charter and about um, Article Five, which is continually invoked um, by the uh, the NATO gang and, and the media acolytes, who are, are apparently uh, the moment the NATO state is attacked, then. One for all, all for one, we're going to war. Um, well, that, that's, the, that's the cartoon version. Exactly, yeah. that's the cartoon version. And as we looked and said, that's not what Article 5 says. And of course, we've talked about Article 1, which commits um, all NATO member states to um, uh, pursue, uh, 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 to resolve all conflicts with non-NATO member states in exclusively peaceful manner. Uh, and that's Article One. So if you violate Article One, and kind of that vitiates anything to do with Article Five, and then he, and then we talked also about Article Ten about inviting new members, um, which makes clear that they can only be invited if that adds to the security of um, the existing uh, members. But one document we haven't talked about is the um, the study that NATO uh, published in 1995 on NATO enlargement. Because at the time, when the Clinton administration began pushing for uh, NATO expansion, uh, there were many people who were very concerned about it. This, was, uh, this wasn't quite what was expected, wasn't really what was promised at the end of the uh, Cold War. There was supposed to be a peace dividend. Uh, there was supposed to be cooperative, productive relations with Russia. And instead, NATO was pushing forward with expansion. So, Na so NATO had to publish um, this very long document um, outlining the conditions that have to be met uh, for being uh, inducted into this club. So this is 1995. At the time, no one yet was in. Um, the first invitations were would be in issued, I think, around 1997, and then the first new members would sign up in 99. So it's worth just taking a quick look at what they said back in 95 um, about um, expansion. And um, here, this is the um, uh, this is the study on NATO enlargement. And it says, it will contribute to the stability and security for all countries in the Euro-Atlantic area by encouraging and supporting democratic reforms, um, fostering in new members of the alliance, the patterns and habits of cooperation, promoting good neighborly relations. Um, and then, you know, but says, notice that which would benefit all countries in the Euro-Atlantic area both members and non-members of NATO. So, well, that's already a, a bit of a non-starter for NATO, since clearly it wasn't doing that. And, and, uh, and it's a non-member of NATO. <laughs> yes. Um, and that says, emphasizing common defense and extending its benefits and increasing transparency, blah, blah, uh, reinforcing the tendency towards integration and cooperation in Europe, and then, uh, and then strengthening the alliance's ability to contribute to European international security. So NATO hasn't done any of that. Um, what, 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 the, what has gone on after the NATO enlargement was um, attacks from out, on outside NATO area countries. I mean, the, the attack on Yugoslavia, which followed, you know, in very short order from this study on uh, enlargement. Um, so it's not promoting good neighborly relations, it's doing exact opposite. Um, and then uh, says the enlargement um, says it uh, in, should accord with the with and help to promote the purposes and principles of the charters of the United Nations. Well, again, you didn't do that since you violated the Charter of the United Nations by you know your bombing of Yugoslavia in 99, you just, you went around it and just ignored the UN Security Council. And then you did the same thing when NATO took part in the peacekeeping missions in Iraq. Again, you know, you kind of ignored the Security Council. Um, and then, uh, and, and it says that, um, 
uh, you know, uh, accords strictly with Article 10, which states that the parties may, by unite, unanimous agreement, invite um, any other uh, European state in a position to further the principles of this treaty. Um, well, you're kind of not even doing that. I mean, you keep badgering Hungary and Turkey. I mean, it, you know, they haven't agreed. I mean, if this is supposed to be security, then you, you keep badgering and harassing them and bullying them, but they don't they don't actually agree that um, these new members are uh, will uh, will will strengthen uh, the alliance. And then um, and then here it says be part of a broad European security architecture based on true cooperation throughout the whole of Europe. It would threaten no one and enhance the stability and security for all well, of Europe. It, it's a very interesting question here, that last uh, uh, paragraph, because there's uh, so much to unpack. Okay, <laughs> what is the whole of Europe, George? Well, yeah. Um, yes. I mean, it's really interesting is that we, we have this document, and then uh, a, a two decades before, it was all about the indivisibility of security. Maybe it's going to come. Maybe right. They do the mention. They, they, yeah. They, 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 they mention that. It's a very, it's very interesting because um, when they first started signing these agreements with Ukraine, and they started back in 1997, they moved like, like, like vultures. They were already moved in on Ukraine. They emphasized the indivisibility of security, so they knew that formula. That you know that didn't come about by accident. No, they they knew that formula, the indivisibility of security, because they knew in 1997 that the Russians were were watching this very warily. That they were they were moving into Kiev and signing these agreements with Ukraine. Oh no no, it's we're going to um, remember the indivisibility of security. Now NATO pretends that they 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 never heard of this uh, this phrase. Rabbit hole. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then it says, new members at the time they join must commit themselves uh, to unite their efforts for collective defense and for the preservation of peace and security, settle any international disputes in which they may be involved by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security and justice are not in danger and refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force in any manner inconsistent with the purposes of the United Nations. So how does that apply to Ukraine? I mean, where, what, how is this in any way uh, compatible uh, with Ukraine? And of course, again, how did NATO um, you know, settle this international dispute by peaceful means when he decided to bomb Yugoslavia? Um, how, how, how was that <laughs> compatible with, in such a manner that international peace and security are not endangered? I mean, you did it, you violated the UN Security Council and you bombed uh, in, in another country. So you clearly were in violation of your charter and of this document on enlargement. And and also this could be applied to Libya, even though- In there Libya, was a, exactly. You know, exactly. But there was the United Nations Security um, um, Council resolution, but it was abused and, and it was wrecked. abused. There was not a, NATO, it was not country. authorizing NATO to use force. It wasn't no. authorizing force. Yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah, NATO immediately interpreted it in that way, but but there was there was no no nothing there. Uh, it, it was essentially an arms embargo. Um, states which have ethnic disputes or external territorial disputes, including irredentist claims or internal jurisdictional disputes, must settle those disputes by peaceful means in accordance with OSCE principles. Resolution of such disputes would be a factor in determining whether to invite a state to join the alliance. So once Ukraine decided to use force against um, its uh, its rebels in 2014, that should have put an end to Ukraine's NATO bid. I mean, they would have said, well, I'm, I'm afraid that's gone uh, until this thing is resolved. Oh, oh, or... or they could have easily said, okay, it's gone. We, we, it's, we no longer recognize it as part of Ukraine. Okay. Right. Okay. And yes. after the, after the referendum in, in Crimea, they could have said the same thing. Okay. It's gone. Right. Then they would have, they right. uh, under NATO terms and conditions, right. they could be a potential candidate. Right. But they right. didn't do either. No, no. And instead, 
NATO did the opposite, it strengthened its ties to uh, Ukraine. It, you know, it basically, as Stoltenberg has said many times, we just poured everything into Ukraine. I mean, you know, we essentially completely identified ourselves with Ukraine when it was clearly in violation of this study on enlargement. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's kind of... And, and by the way, everyone, this is this is also part of the Washington Treaty, the NATO Treaty. Oh, yeah, okay? absolutely. I mean, this is... This is a research report right. dissecting it and, and, right. and, and considering potential options here. But you know, this is a study, but it is in the Washington Treaty or the NATO right. Treaty. No, well, that's it? right, and that and that's the thing that they had to do this because at the time there was a lot of criticism about the uh, expansion of NATO. So they had so NATO had to cobble together um, some very smarmy uh, document to suggest you know in 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 the characteristic, unctuous tone that NATO always adopts. We're only interested in peace. We just want peace. We just want values. We want. We just want everybody to work together cooperatively and peacefully. Protecting that's security. Protecting yes. stability. That's right. That's right. And, and that's why they, they had to do this. And that's why they had to bring in all these uh, platitudes to uh, primarily reassure Russia. Because then in 1997, at the time when they already were going to bring in these uh, three new NATO member states, then they decided belatedly to sign this agreement with Russia, the um, the foundation document, which they violated in any case, which, as, as NATO always does. But that, they had to do that, even though by then already they made the decision to bring in uh, three new member states. Yeah, it, it's Russia's fault that it kept moving towards NATO. This exactly. is the logic. It's that's awesome. right. No, that, that that's right. It's like, you know, stop stop uh hitting um my fist with your face. Um the current discussion on enlargement is taking place in a very different circumstances than those which prevailed during the Cold War. In this context, the decision to admit new members must reflect the fact that the security challenges and risks which NATO faces now are different in nature from those faced in the past. And then it says, in 1991, the strategic concept stated the threat of a simultaneous full-scale attack of all NATO's European fronts has effectively been removed. Now, notice again what they're doing here, because essentially they have to justify the enlargement. Because you say, yeah, yes, so why do you need to enlarge? I mean, the Cold War's gone. NATO is a product of the Cold War. The Warsaw Pact's gone. So, yeah, why, you know, why are you enlarging rather than dissolving? Uh, and then they say, and then say, since then, the risk of a re-emergent large-scale military threat has further declined. Oh, good. Nevertheless, risks to European security remain, which are multifaceted and multidirectional, and thus hard to predict and assess. <laughs> yeah, very hard to predict because they don't exist. And so they, you know, anything that's sort of below the surface essentially has a kind of a, a metaphysical meaning. They don't, it doesn't have any. Uh, physical uh, reality. Uh, NATO must be capable of responding to such risks and new challenges as they develop if stability in Europe and the security of its members, old and new, are, are to be preserved. So this is it. This is it. They, this is the justification. There may be some risks. We can't spell them out. We don't know what the hell they are. But because they may exist, you know, there may be another world uh, other than this one, we need to um, uh, bring in um, new members, irrespective of, of the the uh, possible consequences, which they knew would be serious. They knew then they're not that stupid. They knew then the consequences would be serious. Yeah, and they're all along. And then you have you know you have the chattering classes that actually had um, some more integrity, had more integrity back then. George F. Kennan, you know, yes. saying. No, this is all nonsense here. Right. You're, you're actually going to create a threat by your behavior exactly. and your and, and your worldview. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then enlargement will have implications <clears throat> for all European nations, including states which do not which do not join NATO early or at at all. It will be important to maintain active cooperative relations with countries which do not join the alliance. In order to avoid divisions and uncertainties, well, how's, how did that work out? Um, you, you, you did a good job there. <laughs> the alliance 
should underline that there can be no question of spheres of influence in the contemporary but isn't, era. But isn't the alliance itself a sphere? Well, exactly. No, no, we'll have one giant military bloc occupying the entire European continent. Oh, but we won't have spheres of influence. I mean, but what the hell is that? I mean, that's exactly what you've got. You've got the, you know, a military alliance occupying the whole continent, um, and everyone has to do as they're told. Oh, well, that's not a sphere. And, and, and there, and there is our countries, one specific country that is not allowed to be part of that sphere of influence. Right. Okay. All right. Yes, that's right. Uh, NATO's relations with other European states, whether cooperation partners or not, are important factors to consider in taking any decision to proceed with the enlargement process, as is the building as is building security for states that may not be uh, prospective NATO members. Again, what did you do about that? Are important factors to consider in taking any decisions to proceed with the enlargement process as you push forward with the Baltic states and then uh, Ukraine, and you already you started you started very early with Ukraine, so you, you, you're, you're going to take them into consideration, um, except that you don't. Well, and then you're putting in anti-missile defense systems in Poland and in Bulgaria. And Romania, yeah. yeah. In Romania, same yeah. kind. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but it's against, it was against Iran. It, it was directed at Iran. Right. <laughs> Uh, Russia has an important contribution to make to oh, your yeah. stability and security. <laughs> you know, the, the you know this is typical kind of NATO condescending speak. Well, you have an important contribution. Good man. You know, pat, pat Russia on the back. Very good. Good show. Good show, old man. Yeah. Um, we have agreed that constructive, cooperative relations of mutual respect, benefit, uh, and friendship between the alliance and Russia are a key element security and stability in Europe. Okay, well, you know, that that that's good enough for me. You know, get get you know uh, you know get the hosannas out, you know, but it's absolutely crucial. In June 1994, we agreed that such relations should be developed in a way that reflects common objectives and complements and reinforces relations with all other states, is transparent and is not directed against the interests of third countries. Well, how about it's directed against uh, Russia? <laughs> I mean, they're kind of going, going around it and they know perfectly well what the hell they're doing, but they have to do this for public relations purposes because- I mean, I mean but you know, I mean, if this is a research document, I mean, can they just have one bullet point Russia, through all this process, has been adamant that any expansion is against its own. I mean, that would have been just a little bit of honesty. Okay. Yes, yes exactly. But exactly. I'm sure you're. I'm sure as we go along, we're not going to get a sentence. Well, that. we we're going to get an acknowledgement, a very an, an aside. Um, it says NATO Russia cooperation can help to overcome any lingering distrust from the Cold War period, lingering, and help ensure that Europe is never again divided into opposing camps. Well, what do you do? You, you, what you, happened? <laughs> but that's what you're dividing it to, into opposing camps. This further development of the NATO-Russia relationship and its possible eventual formalization should, talk, should take place in rough parallel with NATO's own enlargement with the goal of further strengthening stability and security in Europe. Um, and then the, the substance of form of this enhanced relationship will be developed through NATO-Russia dialogue. But just remember, what actually is going on here? NATO enlargement means you're scooping up Soviet Union's former allies. So you're moving eastward. Countries that had been military allies of the Soviet Union are being scooped up into your alliance and thus into a, a hostile relationship toward Russia. And now it's a whoa, we'll have NATO with Russia dialogue in a relationship. And, you know, as if, as if you're going to you know, fob people off and say, hey, these countries were our allies. Now they're adversaries. You know, you, this alliance has suddenly moved hundreds of miles to the east. Um, and, and, you know, it's completely upended, you know, the security relationship we'd had um, for, uh, for uh, 50 years. Um, yeah, but. And, there is an easy alternative to all of this, you know, in working in conjunction with Russia at the time. Hey, I, we have an idea here. Why don't we just, you know, Finlandize 
the entire region. Every country that was in the Warsaw Pact, they're, they're neutral, okay? Um, we don't have any military, we'll, we'll move all military equipment um, infrastructure there. You do the same, you respect it, okay? And we bring, we bring peace to the most volatile part of Europe right. uh, in modern history. In modern European history, most of it comes from there. That right. would have been a solution. I think the Russians would have bought it. I agree, I agree. I agree. There were many possible solutions, I mean, including the dissolution of uh, NATO. Because remember, you know, NATO is a, is a unique organization. I mean, it, it's it's always expanding. I mean, you know, there are other organizations in the world, but they're not always expanding. And yet <laughs> NATO just continues. It's unable ever to stop, which is what makes it a very uh, scary uh, organization. They're always, I mean, like, you know, BRICS, okay, it's there, you know, if somebody wants to join BRICS, you know, these things that are talked about and so on, you know, and there are other organizations, Mercosur, and, you know, we have lots of countries, uh, you know, which form all sorts of blocks, but NATO is continually uh, expanding. And so um, this obviously is affects the security of uh, other countries. But what what is NATO does here is I think well yeah yeah we kind of realize that some you might have concerns but hey we can have some dialogue you know we we'll, we'll just you know we'll we'll scoop up these countries um, obviously the the security setup now is very ad, much adverse to your interests but hey we'll have a dialogue we can meet and you know talk about mutual they, concerns they did that George up until the very last second didn't they yep. George has already made clear and I think he's absolutely right is that after eight years of NATOizing Ukraine after the coup in 2014, they were on the cusp of bringing them in, okay? Right. And then just when, you know, when, when Russia's seeing this is a, a very real grave possibility, um, they send out their uh, ultimatums about European security. Right. And then what was the American response? We can talk, we can talk about that. That's we, right. we, <laughs> we'll talk about it, yeah. We yeah. have a dialogue. We, That's we, right. have, we'll we can dialogue. That's right. We can dialogue. Yes. Um, I hate that. I hate that. We, we that. can dialogue. Exactly. NATO uh, Russia relations should reflect Russia's significance in European security and being based on reciprocity, mutual respect, and confidence. No surprise decisions by either side, which could affect the interests of the other. Um, Except well, it was never it was never a surprise. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they they just were had deaf ears. Okay, right. right. This relationship can only flourish if it is rooted in strict compliance with international commitments and obligations, such as those under the UN Charter, the OSCE, and then blah blah. Um, okay, well, the the OSCE, as we mentioned already. States about the uh, you know the <laughs> security is um, what's what's the word um, uh, the, uh, indivisible. The, the security is indivisible. That's kind of in the OSCE, um, and the NATO decisions, however, cannot be subject to any veto or droit de regard by any by a non-member state. Nor can the alliance be subordinated to another European uh, security institution. Why? Why is that? I mean, you know, you, the UN Charter is supposed to um, have, uh, you know, see, you know, uh, superiority of it. You know, it supersedes um, the NATO Charter, and and uh, which the NATO documents themselves acknowledge. Oh, well, yeah, we're, we're we're kind of in, in accord with the UN Charter. Um, <laughs> yeah, everything we do, it's all you know, all in the principle of the UN Charter. Well, then. The, the UN UN Charter makes clear that you can't simply continue to uh, expand at the expense um, of uh, of others, and you certainly can't use uh, your forces uh, against <laughs> others, uh, you know, without um, getting a, a permission slip from the UN Security Council. Yeah, well, you know, the the, the again, you know, um, obligation. Uh, and obligations such as those under the UN Charter, and then the next one is uh, not subordinated, uh, subordinated by any other European. I mean, right. it, no, it, it. And this is what I have been saying, George, and I have been saying a long time: is that NATO wants to supersede the the, yeah. the UN. 
Okay, right. and they don't want to be held accountable uh, by the to the UN. Right, and and that's you know it goes back to the McCainiac idea, right. the you know, League of right. Democracies, and it was just to cut out the UN because of yes. the pesky Russians having a right. veto. Right, that, that, that's that's exactly what it is, um, and that that and that's it. That's why they don't like the UN um, because. That gives yeah, I mean, no, George, how, how has the NATO over the last uh, 16 months, how, how, when and how have they appealed to the United Nations? No, but, you know, they get the, they just get these UN General Assembly um, resolutions, yeah, 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 which, yeah. Have no, which, which have no impact. Um, but what's interesting here is that, you know, NATO is pretty good at trying to get the sort of the liberal left um, on board. So it pretends that it's actually acting in accord with the United Nations. It, of course, it isn't, but it's been, but it's been quite good. It's just like when when it did that whole um, humanitarian intervention, the, that was, which was the big thing in the nineties, and and then it, and then to beyond with Libya. Hey, we're in the business of stopping mass atrocities, and that got you know that got all the dimwits, you know, all these the AOCs and the human rights work. Oh yeah, yeah, great. NATO's neat. You know, we're 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 going after the uh, the human rights abusers, um, but but you know this this was always this was the NATO uh, agenda essentially just continue expanding and essentially becoming the, the sort of the the dominant force on the Eurasian landmass. Right. Well, while, while preaching about human rights. That's right. Exactly. That that's that's where you do it. Um, and then Russia has raised concerns with respect to the enlargement process of the alliance. The alliance is addressing these concerns in developing its wider relationship with Russia. And the alliance has made it clear that the enlargement process, including the associated military arrangement, will threaten no one and contribute to a developing broad European security architecture based on true cooperation throughout the whole of Europe, uh, enhancing security and stability for all. So this is the so thing. Why, what, so why was NATO um, uh, arming, uh, training Ukrainian troops for eight years before the uh, special right. military operation? That's right. Okay. That's right. That's it. That, exactly. And of course, the, the idea of saying, well, it, it threatens no one, is just a meaningless, it's, it's a platitude. I mean, it's, 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 it's the whole, well, we're just defensive. You know, you can say what you like about yourself. The issue is how you are perceived by others, and that and, and NATO never seems to un, uh, you know un, understand that. Or the NATO apologist like um, uh, Michael McFall, it doesn't matter. You can talk to your blue in the face. Well, we're defensive. We're defensive. We we pose no threat to anyone. Well, no, I mean that's not how you perceive, and that's it. And you're not perceived. You know that you may say that about yourself. But when nobody ever just takes one person's evaluation of himself. I mean, it's how you are seen by others. And NATO is not seen as some benign, uh, non-threatening, defensive uh, you know, supper club in which they talk about values um, over the dinner table. Yeah, well, you know, the military alliance, there'll be dissenters, but they're, they're, they will come down on the side of sending cluster uh, bombs. To exactly, Ukraine. exactly. Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's right. You, you, yeah. uh, you'll threaten no one. Okay. <laughs> what about gen generations of young kids that will have their limbs blown off? Okay. That's you right. threaten no. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, concerns have already been expressed in the context of discussion of the enlargement of NATO that a new member might close the door behind it to new admissions in the future. Uh, and they say such a situation must be avoided. The alliance rests upon commonality of views and a commitment to work for consensus. Part of the evaluation of the qualification of a possible new member will be its demonstrated commitment to that process and those values. So in other words, you're saying to them, you better watch it. You, you know, we'll let you in, but don't think for one moment about trying to keep anyone else out. And they've used that argument against Hungary. And Orban said this, that because, they, well, you know, they let us in. Um, so it puts us in an awkward position when we object to others uh, joining. No, I mean, that, that it goes together. We let you in, and then you have to be, you know, in favor of letting everybody else in. That, 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 those are the conditions for membership. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> that's a very peculiar open door policy. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> You, you have no once you're in you have no agency whatsoever that's it, exactly you do you do as you're told yeah um and um, and so here is there it is there it is 2002 the first nato ukraine action plan isn't that nice 20 years ago already they were putting an action plan action plan so you know they're already uh, planning on action uh, the purpose of the action plan is to identify clearly Ukraine's strategic objectives and priorities in pursuit of its aspirations towards full integration into Euro-Atlantic security structures and to provide a strategic framework for existing and future NATO-Ukraine cooperation under the Charter. Um, now, remember... When when it made its uh, declaration of sovereignty, Ukraine declared that it would be neutral; it wouldn't join any military alliance. When it in its first constitution, it also said it would be neutral; it would not join any military alliance. Two thousand and ten, Yanukovych is elected and makes clear in the constitution NATO will not be a member of any alliance. But here's NATO, two thousand and two. This is there uh, that the, we have these. Uh, transatlantic, in, in view of Ukraine's foreign policy orientation toward European and Euro-Atlantic integration, including its long-term goal of NATO membership, Ukraine will continue to develop legislation based on universal principles of democracy and international law and then full integration into Euro-Atlantic security structures. Notice it's already Euro-Atlantic. They're already basically denying, you know, the fact that you know Ukraine has a very substantial uh, Russian part to it, um, having been a part of Russia, but already here, two thousand two, this is what uh, NATO is pushing. This is long before Maidan, and when you know this is the uh, the cult built, and the rest of them said, you know, hey, Ukraine has to make an existential choice. Yep, this is this has been a. A long-term project, and careers have been built around this. Okay, and very well funded, George. Very well funded, exactly. And as um, Victoria Newland said on many occasions, you know, we we put a lot of money into it, um, taxpayer money. Uh, At one point, uh, she said five billion dollars. Five billion, but that was five billion. That, she said that in twenty fourteen. Yeah, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but that that's the NGO brigade and stuff that's like right. that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean the. the NATO, don't ever listen to what it says, what it no. claims, okay? This is an organization that is fighting to survive and is looking for any reason to continue its existence. And it's found one. Um, it found Russia. And right. uh, it will do anything and everything everything within its power um, to diminish Russia's um, um, strategic right. um, uh, power Right. Um, in the Euro-Atlantic area, right, right. It means sacrificing Ukraine. So be it. Exactly. Absolutely. I mean, it's mobilized the entire European continent um, against Russia. That that is great achievement. That it's yep. essentially mobilized it. Uh, you know, you know, and has spread hatred of Russia throughout Europe, um, which wasn't there before. It it, it had done it particularly. Uh, you know, in many parts of Eastern Europe, where there was no. Uh, great hostility uh, toward Russia. This has been an effect of the NATO propaganda campaign, the constant NATO uh, coercion. Um, but I think that's that's its uh, the great achievement. And there, there it was. You know, they 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 knew they were up against it in 1991 um, with their project of uh, NATO enlargement. So they had to cobble together this dishonest. Uh, oh yeah, we're just, it's, you know, we're we're just doing this in order to enhance security and stability. When yeah, but George, but George, you know, even in the document that you you provided us, um, talked about the the um, the legal status of uh, Ukraine's uh, international setting. Okay, neutrality. Right. So everyone, these documents, are, George found it, anyone else can find it. Yep. So that's why there was a coup in 2014, to yep. change the constitution, to put in a cadre of people, right. the, the, the most vicious of them all, these ethno-nationalists from the, the Galicians. And, the, and once you put them into place, right. well, of course, they're going to change the constitution, okay? Right. Right. All fits together. This is, you know, Russia's unprovoked invasion, okay? Do right. a little bit of... Just a 
scratch of history here. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and that, that, you know, and, and this is a, a, a long road, a long, long uh, project. And, uh, you know, the, the, the entire the record of NATO deceit, you know, it, it you know, we, we've, we, we've talked a lot about uh, James Baker and the uh, not one inch to the east, but he went on after that. That was just in 1990, <laughs> you know, so year after year. Uh, they they've been uh, deceiving uh, the public, and of course, you know, they you know they they do, doing this uh, now, and with all with all the sort of oh you know we we have to do this uh, uh, for Ukraine you know because we have to you know uh, you know de de defend Ukraine. This war has been brought about by you. You you are a party to the conflict. You are the very essence of what this they conflict are is the about. The architects of yeah. this conflict. That's right. They are the godfathers and godmothers of That's this right. conflict. That's right. Okay. But Joe Biden wasn't asked to. See, it's it's really interesting. Is that I think really what George and I, what we try to provide our viewers is that we contextualize things because this is what the media will never do in the political class. They never, they decontextualize. And we push back and say, well, let's put this all into context. Okay. And George did a wonderful forensic job again in yeah. doing that. These okay. documents do exist, and there is intentionality, and there's okay. a lot of money spent. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, they're all on the NATO website. Just go there. There's a long record of, of all of these promises uh, that NATO made over the years, all broken. Uh, and then you just sort of throw, oh, oh, look, you know, this is an unprovoked attack. Oh, we're not a party to this conflict. We're, we're just a defensive side. Yeah, For yeah, sure. you know, we, we, God, we, we, we're just trying to help poor little Ukraine. I mean, we, 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 you know, we, we, you know, just acting like like the Good Samaritan, uh, you know, and and again, as we saw, you know, in the previous video with media uh, acolytes like Farid Zakaria, you know, they they, they get away with this. Um, never, never are they ever confronted with any of these documents. Uh, you know, just, you know, even, I mean, by now, most people at least have heard of the, the Bay James Baker commitment. You know, you think, hey, did you stick by this commitment that, that the no, United George, States actually, made to Gorbachev? I think it was, it was many years ago now. I think it was in Foreign Policy magazine, which is a complete rag. And they, they, they interview these like under deputy secretaries of state. Like, you know, I, I, you know, I've never heard that, you know, they've never proven that, you know, oh, the yeah, Baker ever said that this has just been made up. This is a talking point. They actually say that. That's right. That's right. They exactly. actually they, deny they, say that. they absolutely do say that. Exactly say that. A whole, a whole bunch of people who just say that. Um, and they say, no, 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 that was never made. And, you know, it's there. You know, <laughs> it's been published in the National Security Archive. They say, here, here it is. Um, this was what Baker said. This was the, uh, you know, the not one inch to the east. And then they said, oh, yeah, yeah, but he was only talking about um, uh, Germany. He was only talking about American forces in Germany. Yeah, but, you know, if he meant not one inch to the east in Germany, then it would stand to reason that it applies to Eastern Europe because Eastern Europe is to the east of Germany. <laughs> yeah, it was the, you know, just to clarify, not one inch east after there was the unification of Germany. Okay, right. that's what right. this was. That's right. And that's that right. was the most bitter of all bitter pills that right. Gorbachev stupidly, stupidly right. swallowed. Right. Yeah, that's right. What that's about right. the 27 million people that died? Yeah, that, that's right. Me? Right. Now we're going to talk about that in another video because yeah, we just gonna... gave it away. Yeah. Did this, Gorbachev will go down as the biggest chump in history. Okay, certainly in Russian history. But, Sorry to bring it to No, no, we'll talk about it in the it next. Hit, it, hit, it hit a hot wire. It just hit a hot wire. I know, I know. But yeah, we're, we're, but we got another video coming up about our friend Annalena Baerbock, and uh, <laughs> and we'll talk about that. All right, that's a good tease. All right, everybody, this is Peter and George. We are The Gaggle. We're on Local, so please go to thegaggle.locals.com. Um, uh, please visit our store. Um, tomorrow is George's first live stream of the week, and I think he's going to be giving you an, up to, uh, an update. An update. The, the, the Vilnius uh, catastrophe. The, Vil the Vilnius catastrophe, exactly. So please uh, join me 3 p.m. Eastern time. Come with comments, criticisms, and suggestions, and 
Think about little buddy because he says, yeah, you know, we, we drew up a charter for the uh, the tip jar. Nobody even remotely tried to stick to the, the charter. You know, it's we, part like, of the record. It's, it's, it's the record. on the record. And so, yeah, you know, I mean, what, what happened to all that? You know, all those, you know, volumes of uh, paper that was went into that. So he's got a good point. So please, if you have a, a, a few bob in your pocket, whip them out, dunk them in that tip jar. That'll keep him uh, happy, we, we hope. Uh, we're very grateful for all of your help and friendship and support. The more you're able to donate, the more of these videos we can make, the more we can work on the technology. And above all, you can get you know Buddy away from all these charters and principles and documents. He's, he's very bad like that. Um, so remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.